Before we design the rest of our app, we're going to make our building process easier and put our recipe card into a reusable element. We can do this in two ways. We can right click and hit convert into a reusable element, or we can copy the element, drop down the pages drop down, and hit add new reusable element. We'll call this recipe card and hit create. Let's double click on the reusable element and let's turn off the background color and paste in our recipe card. Our recipe card is now missing our data source because it cannot find any data source since it was powered by the current cell in our repeating group. So if we click on the reusable element itself, we can set the type of content to recipe and Bubble will automatically find that data source for the recipe card we pasted in. We'll match the height of the reusable element to the card itself and then we'll delete the card on the home page inside the repeating group and replace it with our new reusable element. And when we do this, it'll repeat through every cell just like any other element would. Except now if we wanted to edit something, we would do so inside the reusable element. Since this reusable element has gone inside a repeating group, we need to make sure we're setting the data source to pass through the current cell's recipe like we did without the reusable element. Now that we've done this, nothing visual has actually changed. So if we preview our application, you won't notice any difference. But now if we wanted to edit this element at all, we can just go into the reusable element and change something and have that reflect wherever this reusable element lives. As you build more and more with Bubble, it's this type of design thinking that is going to save you the most time and be the most effective as you build your app. In the next lesson, we're going to utilize this reusable element as we build our recipe page.